How's it going Mikey family? My name is Mikey and welcome back to a new video. Today we are doing a graphics comparison comparing Mystery Dungeon Red Rescue Team with Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX. Now if you want to see more Mystery Dungeon content like this, be sure to smash that like button down below and press subscribe. Now let's get straight into this, I'm going to talk about all the features, all the things that basically happen within the first few sort of missions in this game and sort of talk about the mechanics and how they've changed to the new remake and how they're different to the old one. So let's just get straight into it. So as we can see here we start off both games with the uh, Pelipus post office and a sort of overview of the uh, town below. Very very obviously you can see the difference in graphics between the old one and the new one clearly like straight up they know exactly what they're doing with this one. The logo's smaller. The animation so much sleeker. I mean, obviously the old one was on GBA, but you could just tell it's slightly different. And then we just get straight into it, and we go from there. So in this section of the game, we can see both parts going for a quiz. The GBA version is actually a little bit faster than the Switch version, which is really weird, but it is. And so I've had to speed up the Switch version to catch up with the GBA. Really, really interesting. And I really like the style that the Switch has gone for this time. It's got this almost like spirit, there's these rainbow colours, the questions, the sort of more... It's, it's more matching to the art theme, basically. And you get here, you get to this point where it tells you what Pokemon you are, and it gives you almost some information about yourself. It tells me I'm selfish, that sort of thing, you know? And then you get given your Pokemon. And I really like the selection screen for this game. It's so much better. And then we get to this point here where our partner wakes us up. Now the art style for me, at the start, I wasn't so keen on it compared to the old games. The old games just had this beautiful sort of simplicity. But as I've gone on with the Switch version in the demo, I've really, really enjoyed the art style. And I think it worked a lot better in the dungeons than it did on this part of the game right here. Now we can see we're talking to our partner and shocked that we're obviously a Pokemon. And I just think it's really nice how they've done it. They've changed some words just to make it a bit more natural and a bit more flowing. Now we can see here the Butterfree comes in to talk about her Caterpie and the animation just makes more sense. It just seems a bit more lively, a little bit less sort of static, a bit more dynamic and the chat being placed at the bottom with the icon, it seems a bit less random and a bit more organised. It's really, really nicely designed. It's more like a conversation than before. Before it was more detached and now it's sort of conversation between all three of us right there. So now we move on to the dungeon. So in this section here, we go into the tiny woods to go and find Caterpie. The GBA version gives us a tiny bit of a description and the Switch version actually gives us some commentary on how Mystery Dungeons work, what a Mystery Dungeon is. And so it's a bit more paced. It feels a bit more easy to understand. It shows you some controls on the screen. Here's me going through the bag and all the options and how the Switch version works compared to the GBA version. The GBA version is very much more simple. It's got literally the B menu, you go through the team, you go through your items. Switch version, however, you've got your actual plus, or I think it's an X uh, button screen, and then you've also got the B button, which actually gets you to that faster, and you can do sorts of things like that. Now, if you just saw there, I pressed the plus button, and basically, later in the game, you can switch leaders, which you couldn't do before in the GBA version, which really, really adds to the idea that you have some control on how you take the battles, when you get into further on and you're getting into those level 99 dungeons, you can take on those Pokemon with either yourself or your partner, which means that if you don't get the Pokemon you want, you could always choose one that you actually do want to play with and then just switch them up, you know? So it's not it's not as such you, it's you and your partner. It's more like a team. It makes more sense, you know? And then you see here we've got the stairs. You know, the, the dungeon design is very, very similar. But the actual graphics update is absolutely insanely beautiful. I think it's a really, really nice addition to this game. Definitely, definitely great. Now here I skip forwards a little bit to get towards the next part of the dungeon. And you can see that our partner does a lot more on his own, I feel, than he did in the old games. I do believe that he sort of attacks on his own. He kind of goes off a bit more and then he comes back to you. The interesting thing is, is that before in the old games, you'd have to, you'd basically, you'd walk through with your partner and swap. In the new games, your partner just gets pushed back in a little sort of whirlwind. It's kind of interesting looking. Now, the battle system in this hasn't changed much, but it's definitely more refined. And there's also an auto mode you can see on your screen right here, which is really, really, really beneficial to the new games. 
Now we get to the point where we see Caterpie in the end of the tiny woods and obviously we get a very similar dialogue to the first games on the left and the second games on the right. And then what's nice about the finishing of a quest is you do get this little thing sort of saying you completed the quest, it's much more beautifully made. And now we get to the point where Butterfree's here and obviously we go back to where we were before. But it's nice because Caterpie is sparkling, his eyes are looking at us, you know, it's a bit more refined. It's less sort of static, like I said before. And we get all the, obviously, the items we get. And we actually get more items this time, I believe, from the previous games. So it's quite nice. It's quite a nice upgrade. So if you look here on the left-hand side, you can see that we got some raw berries and teacher berries. Whereas on the right, we got 500 Poke Dollars. You know, much better in my, in my eyes, really, to be honest with you. I think they really, really thought about how it's going to help us as people playing the game, you know, at this point in time. Now what's interesting in this section here is that we actually get to the point where we get to see our house and luckily enough for you guys we get a good comparison because I chose two water types somehow by luck. I got two water types Pokemon which means that we get to see the water house like for like and it's really interesting how they've updated it. The camera angles they've done you know something with them. They've done a lot with you know the actual general graphics and the graphic style. I really do like the new graphic style and I think once you sort of get past the idea that it looks a bit weird and artistic looking, it actually makes sense because it actually works quite well and it gives a real nice adventurous mystery dungeon vibe. So overall I'd say the house is a nice upgrade and I think it's really really nicely done so good job to them lot. Now we have the same dialogue, they've updated the typeface which makes it absolutely beautiful. I think it's much more elegant, it's much more rescue themed and again we go back to the logo on the main screen here. And the one on the left looks great but it fills the screen a bit too much whereas the one on the right is much more elegant, it takes in the pre like the background in the back and sort of enjoys that as much as you know it can do really. And now here we see the interior of the house itself. Now it's very 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 much the same. like like for like identical except they've actually worked on the lighting they've worked on how the textures look the models the water everything it just looks nice it looks really well refined now here's a bit of a difference you see is here it tells us to go back to bed on the gba version whereas on the actual switch version it just lets us continue it's rather it's rather peculiar how they made that choice i think there's more a continuity thing they just wanted us to get straight back into the story as opposed to sort of delaying it a bit more. And that you'll notice in the, this video a few times, there's actually quite a few differences between them. There's a bit where we sleep for a bit longer on the GBA version and we're already up and going on the Switch version. There's also we get to see Diglett in the Switch version, whereas in the GBA version, we never see Diglett until you go to do Mount Steel's mission to go and get Diglett for Doug Trio. Really, really interesting how they decided to change it, but I think it was more just to make it flow better, give you more to do, and it was just more immersive than before. Now, obviously, growing up on this Mystery Dungeon game, for me, it was immersive enough. For, for the kids of today, I think it's really, really nice to have something that's a bit more child-friendly, a bit more flowing, a bit less confusing as such, because I think games nowadays, the aim is to get as less confusing as possible, make the story simple, but make it enjoyable. And you can see that with this game especially, you know, they've really gone for the idea of making Mystery Dungeon adventurous, but also fun and cheerful. Now you see here we can see the Pelipper comes down. Now I love this change they've made. On the old version you can see on the left, it sort of gets to a point and then it turns 90 degrees and comes towards the mailbox. In the Switch version, it sort of flows down, it floats down because they can use 3D models to animate it. And I love this animation here, instead of having to awkwardly wait and just standing, They've actually used like, you know, they use icons above the character's head and you know, it's a bit more animated. And you can see here we get the mission from Magnemite and it's just nice because the text isn't capitalized in the new version, whereas in the old version it's very much capitalized, very much sort of a bit more serious and I think it just needs to be a bit more chill, a bit more relaxed. And we just take the mission straight away and it's really nice to see the animation difference just there at the end. Now, as you can see here, we see the map is very, very different. And I actually really, really like the Switch map a lot more there. It's got a bit more character. It's a little less flat, a little less dungeony, and a bit more sort of magical and mysterious. It's really nice. Then we go into the cave just here, going into Thunder Wave Cave. I love the Magnemite models. I think they look almost like fluffy dolls. It's kind of weird, but yeah, they look like fluffy dolls. It's kind of nice looking. 
And here we start walking around, we get recommended to use the dash on the switch screen, which you see me using just there. And it's just nice to see the difference in the cave. I like the fact that the walls are bigger. It makes it much more of a dungeon game. Before it just seemed a bit flat, but that's all the GBA could do at the time. Whereas now, with the Switch, we can do a lot more. It's high res, it's HD. And here we use auto mode again. I mentioned that I've been passing earlier. And the auto mode, basically, you can direct it to either explore or you can direct it towards the stairs. So what it'll do is it'll either look for things within a dungeon and point them out to you in a dialogue box, or it'll go straight towards the stairs. And it basically means if you're running low on health and you want to get out of your dungeon as fast as possible, it'll help you find the best way there. So it's fantastic that they've added that feature. I think that's one of the best features out there. And the other feature, obviously I mentioned in passing just a bit earlier in the video, you can swap with your leader. And I just think that's really, really useful in terms of gameplay. I think it's really effective. And here it gives us some more information on how to battle, how to use your moves. Again, that I noticed in this game's the new one, I noticed the fact that you can literally, when you start out, you have like four moves already. Whereas on the old ones, it's a lot of, much more of a harder game because you have scratch and growl or you have tackle and growl or tackle and leer or scratch and leer, blah, blah, blah. You know, in the new games, you get like mud bomb, mud slap, water gun and tackle from, on a mud kit, for example. It is so much more beneficial towards, you know, like taking a Pokemon on you actually have some here, you know, you have some sort of advantage, some sort of bonus, some sort of way to actually do it. So it's going to make it easier. And I like to see how that goes when it comes to the games later on, whether it gets easier throughout the next levels or whether it's still as difficult as the previous games, because the games were really difficult. I'll be honest with you, it, you know, here on the left right now, I'm struggling to actually stay alive and I'm having to use an orange berry on the right. I'm having a breeze. At the end of the day, you know, the difference between the two is so big. You're thinking, you know, is the second game, like the remake, going to be a blowover? And if not, you know, that's fantastic because, you know, you want a dungeon crawler to be difficult. But obviously we don't want it to be as difficult as the first one because, you know, you've got to allow for the fact that people want an easier game in some ways. So it's a real different sort of way that they've gone about it. But I think Pokemon have done a really nice job on sort of levelling it out a little bit more. And you can see me there using the attacks once again. So you have that choice. You have this sort of, you can use the R button, I believe it is. And then you can use the X, A, Y, and B to select your attack. So it's much more simplified. Now here you can see we get to the Magnemite part of the actual dungeon. And obviously we just get back to the entrance of the cave. And I think it just looks so nice. Look at this title screen again, sort of completed Thunderwave Cave. You got some little items there, some little illustrations. It's just so much more dynamic, so much more 3D, so much more well made. And I think had the people who not who created this game not done the artistic sort of stroke style, you know, with all the little pen strokes and stuff, I think it would have looked a bit out of place and a bit sort of formal and computerized, if that makes sense. But because they've done that sort of little graphic-y style, I think it really, really adds to the beauty of the games. Now here, like I said before, you've, you can see some gaps, you know, GBA doesn't fill in that gap, whereas the Switch game does, so it's kind of interesting to see that gap being, you know, filled up with something else. I think it adds to the game a bit. I played the game straight, like, without stopping the demo, and it was 45 minutes long, you know. So it's nice to see that there's a lot of pace to it, there's a lot of, you know, lengthening of the game. It's well made. I think it's really well made. Now here, we've, we've literally got the same point. Very, very similar dialogue, but here we've got the little sort of icons again above the mailbox to signify, because otherwise you don't really know. You know, your mailbox doesn't look full on the GBA game. On the Switch game, it gets filled with actual model letters. It's really, really well done. Now, obviously our partner comes up to us and we're talking about the town and P Pelipper post office, which is really nice to see in the demo, because I was so worried when I was playing through the demo that we were gonna end it at one mission or another. But we got to see the Pokemon Square, we got to get all the way up to the Diglett mission, which was actually fantastic if you ask me. And obviously now we get a tour of town, we get to see the Kecleons. Now on the GBA version, it wasn't so refined. You sort of get shown stuff on a sort of cutscene. You know, the camera pans, whereas on the actual remakes, because of the technology they had, they could actually make our character be, fo you know, following 
a partner around the town. They could, you know, make the models animate without having to have character input, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Like, you could literally look around the town without an issue and it's much more immersive, I think. I think it's a much more sort of well-made and I think it's definitely an improvement. I think, you know, in terms of remakes go, I think it's one of the better ones that Pokemon have brought us in terms of side games or if anything, really. You know, they've sort of done themselves proud with it because, you know, Super Mystery Dungeon, and I can't even remember the other one, Gates to Infinity, they were so almost abysmal. I know it sounds awful, but they weren't great. They were really, really sort of badly designed in my opinion. You know, they weren't, they didn't give you that sort of adventurous vibe. It was sort of not very well guided, whereas this is sort of an improvement on a game that we know is well made. And I'm hoping that with these games, you, you know, if we let them know that we like this, maybe they'll bring us the, uh, you know, remakes to Explorers of Time, Darkness and the Sky. That would be absolutely fantastic. Now you can see us here looking at the bulletin board, checking out some jobs. Very easily to do, because I thought you'd have to go to the bulletin board, then it'd go to accepted jobs like the GBA game, then take the job. Whereas on this, you can just straight up press A on the job and you've got the job there. And it's much more ex explanatory. It shows you where you actually go. Whereas in the GBA game, you just have to assume that you go back to your base, go down. And then you see us looking around town here, going up to the Wish Cash Pond. As you notice in Switch, they can make the map seamless, whereas in GBA, to save on memory, what they do is they do an area at a time. So, for example, you go down to the dojo on a separate area. You go up to the Wish Cash Pond on a separate area. You know, it has cutoff points because otherwise it just takes way too much memory. Whereas the Switch game, you can just wander, it's seamless, the whole town's inclusive of itself. And you see us going down to the dojo. No cutscene, no cutting, no, you know, no, no nothing. You know, it's just this one map and it's really, really nicely done. Now, obviously, we're going to go back to base now on the GBA version and on the Switch version. And I notice our character runs faster on the Switch version, which is quite nice. And we're going to go there and take a mission on the GBA version. And the Switch version actually gives us a cutscene to show us where you go, basically. It's really nice because it shows you where you're meant to be going. I think it's a great introduction to the Mystery Dungeon series. And I hope that if they do remake other games like this, we get the same introduction or people can understand that that's how the games work you know it was really difficult as a kid to play the mystery dungeon games because you had to know how to do it you couldn't just go in with a blind face and just assume to know how to do it whereas in the remakes now you can sort of work it out it's sort of it's sort of self-explanatory you know it has a lot of cutscenes to help out the graphic style helps out the dialogue helps out you know and we just do a simple mission just here, we get a Nidoran on the Switch version, on the GBA I took a few more missions, but that's because the GBA is actually faster paced, but harder, which means that you end up not having the levels. And you can see here on the GBA I'm having a struggle getting the Pidgey. Basically, if you want to save a Pokemon from a dungeon, you can't be next to them because you just swap with them. Whereas in a Switch version, you can literally be straight next to the Pokemon and approach the Pokemon and they'll come with you. Which was really, really nice because it was so difficult on the GBA version to get that Pidgey. And I think that's one thing that they've really focused on this remake is getting the mechanics right. I think they've really definitely sort of honed in on the idea that mechanics need to be well designed and they need to be intuitive. You can't just have a mechanic where it's, you know, assuming that you'll know how to do it. So here we go, we go into more dialogue, wake up the next morning and you know, you can see from the house itself and this is a big section right here where GBA does not have this entire day. The GBA will go straight into the dream night, the second dream night. Whereas this, we have another fissure, another earthquake and then we realize it's a diglet, which you don't see at all in GBA. You just straight up have to rescue the diglet. Whereas this, you get to get latched onto this character and as you'll see shortly, the second one Stiglet disappears, he actually leaves something very, very beneficial for us. Because where he digs, he'll dig to the Pelipper Post Office and then digs to our base to scene in the dialogue. And then once he goes, you're actually able to use that tunnel to skip to the bulletin board, which is absolutely fantastic. And then you can see here the Pelipper, the same cutscene again. Really nice audio design. Obviously, you guys can't hear that, but the audio design is fantastic in this game as well. I think they've improved on it. And as you can see here, 
You can jump between the base and the pellet post office, which is really, really helpful, to be honest with you. Saves you walking all the way through town to get a job and then all the way back. You know, you can just whip backwards and forwards, get your jobs needed, and go on to the dungeons. It's fantastic. I think it's really, really, really well thought out. Now you can see here, we're just reading through all the mail, and I'm just trying to work out how the controls work, so you can just shuffle up and down through the letters. And then we get some dojo tickets, which you can use at the Makihita Dojo to go and train yourself up a few levels. Now I tried that, and it took me to level 10 from level 7, which was really impressive, to be honest with you. So that was quite a nice little uh, sort of bonus just there. And then obviously we did a mission and then came back to the house. Now this is the part where the GBA joins back on again. And we go back into a dreamland. And it's kind of interesting just having the differences. Now the dream is very similar. Obviously they refined the sort of blur and the sort of aura. Whereas in the you know GBA version it's a lot less refined. But you know that's all they could do with the machine they had. So it's quite interesting, you know, and it's a lot less shaky on the Switch version than it is the GBA, as you can see here. Very interesting how they chose to do it. And, you know, again, with the text and the, the place in general, you know, the water's just so much lighter and well designed. But in the old Mystery Dungeons, they got the point across, you know. So it's quite interesting, you know, they've done the same stones in the same places. And then, you know, the dialogue's just sort of better done and the animation's smoother. Just everything has been remade very, very well to the best of, you know, the game maker's ability. So it's quite interesting. They've added some, obviously, emotions again, like I said, floating above the head. And that's it. You know, a puff of smoke and the Doug trio is gone. Now, there's a bit more dialogue in the Switch again, pacing it further. And then we go and join the Game Boy version outside. And we see our partner approaches once again. And it's just, you know, it's just a bit different. It's just... There's variations, there's enough there, and I'm hoping that because of that, there should be enough graphic variation and enough mission variation that we get a very different game. Now, that's all I have time for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to smash that like button down below, and I will see you guys very soon for another video.